Hello, and welcome to this open topography tutorial on how to perform vertical differencing on overlapping point cloud data sets available on open topography. High resolution topography is a powerful observational tool for studying Earth's surface and natural hazards. When an area is imaged multiple times, differencing of two or more topographic data sets can detect surface change from a variety of tectonic, geomorphic, and anthropogenic processes, including earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, river erosions, landslides, and urban development. Today, I will walk you through how to perform on-demand topographic differencing. This image here shows sand dune migrations at White Sand Dunes National Monument in New Mexico. I'll walk you through how to generate this result. We first recommend that you log into Open Topography. If you do not have an account, take a moment to create an account. It's free. Once you set up an account and log into Open Topography, you are able to process larger data sets, access a dashboard of all your previous jobs, and have access to more processing tools. You can find the available data sets by clicking the Data tab. The dots are the location of the high resolution topography data available from Open Topography. As you zoom in, the dots become polygons that show the extent of the available data sets. Open Topography has enabled vertical differencing change detection for LiDAR data sets that cover the same area and are in the same coordinate system. To start, we draw a box around New Mexico. When we scroll down, we can see the available data sets and the data products, both point cloud and raster. We see that we have a couple of options for performing change detection. We have the White Sand National Monument New Mexico data set, as well as the Jemez River Basin Snow Off and Snow On data sets. Today, we are going to select the White Sands data set from September 2009. Note that we could get similar results if we had selected the January 2009 or this third White Sands National Monument data set. So to perform change detection, we will click this change detection icon. This interface shows us the extent of both LiDAR data sets, one from September 2009 and the other from June 2010. The convention, as established in the literature, is for the reference data set to be the more recent of the two data sets. In this case, that's the June 2010 data here colored in green. The compare data set is often the earlier data set and is colored in purple. In this case, it's the September 2009 data. During the difference calculation, the compare data set is subtracted from the reference data set. First, we draw a blue box around the area where we are interested in performing the differencing. Then, below the map, we need to set some processing options. In the vertical differencing section, we can switch the reference and compare data sets. In this example, there are actually three overlapping LiDAR data sets over the white sands, so if we wanted to, we could change which one we want to compare to the September 2009 data set. Ultimately, comparing the September 2009 data set to these two other topography data sets ultimately give us more resolution to view the changes and movement of the sand dunes. In section 2, we see the coordinates of the blue box where we want to perform the differencing. We also see the number of LiDAR points that are going to be processed. Note that open topography constrains the size of the job that can be run. If the system says your job is too large, please choose a smaller area. In the differencing, both data sets are gridded to an identical grid using the 10 algorithm. 10 stands for triangulated regular network. 
in section three, we can set the parameters for the raster or grid of the vertical differencing. The differencing output will be on a rectangular grid with this resolution. This box shows the grid resolution. We offer a default setting based on the lower resolution data set. For the white sands data set, the default resolution is one meter. As the user, you can alter the default settings by typing a different value into the grid resolution box. Optionally, in the error threshold section, here in 4, you can check the box to define an error threshold. Displacements below this threshold are discarded. This gives you the ability to mask or discard vertical changes that you think are likely related to errors in the two datasets that may reflect, for example, the overall accuracy of the two input LiDAR datasets. For all datasets, the default value is half a meter. And this basically is an assumption of 35 centimeters of error in each LiDAR collection. This error threshold can be changed by the user. In section five, you have the option of generating hillshade images of the two input LiDAR datasets. And below here, you can enter a job title, description, and your email address. And then press submit. We wait a few minutes. We can see the job as it is processing. See that we are querying and tinning or gridding both the reference and compare data sets. We then perform the vertical differencing change detection by subtracting the two digital elevation models or DEMs. Once the job is complete, the page refreshes with the results. If you don't want to wait and watch the job run, you can close the page and the system will send you an email when the job is done. Here we have the results page, including a differencing job report where we can see the two data sets, our title, and the processing time. So here we can see that the entire processing from data selection to the differencing calculation took less than five minutes. Here's the vertical differencing result. The left plot shows the vertical difference change detection over the White Sands National Monument in New Mexico between September 2009 and June 2010. Erosion or downward motion of the ground surface is colored in red. Deposition or upward movement is colored in blue. For the New Mexico sand dune case, we see that the dunes are migrating towards the northeast, driven by a dominant wind direction from the southwest. On the right is a histogram of the differences, plotting counts here versus vertical difference. When we scroll down, we see the results of the differencing with the 0.5 meter error threshold. Vertical differences below the error threshold are shown in black. The right plot shows the vertical difference histogram, but the points with vertical differences below the error threshold are not shown. The vertical bars on the histogram show the portion of the distribution that is below the error detection threshold. Here are the topographic hillshades of the reference and the compare datasets. You can also view these results in Google Maps by clicking View in Google Map. Here are the results shown in Google Maps. This first layer here shows the differencing results laying on top of the optical imagery from Google can also toggle on the reference layer or the compare layer. Thank you for watching our video. Have fun differencing topography.